The Dr. Pepper Parade. Yes, friends, the Dr. Pepper Parade, led by that lovely, lively little majorette, pretty Peggy Pepper. And here she is. Bringing joy across the land. Dr. Pepper. If you want to lead the band, drink it every day. Energy picks up and you'll enjoy life more. Remember Dr. Pepper time. Ten and two and four. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jack Arthur asking you all to step up and step out in the Dr. Pepper Parade. Right along with Pretty Peggy Pepper, the Pepper Uppers, Peter Van Steeden and his orchestra, and starring Molasses and January. All brought together each week at this time by Dr. Pepper, the swell drink that's inviting, delighting, and exciting. Now let's all get together with a modern version of an old American song, The Bulldog and the Bullfrog. And the bullfrog in the pool. Oh, the bulldog on the bank. And the bullfrog in the pool. Oh, the bulldog on the bank. And the bullfrog in the pool. The bulldog call the bullfrog a green old water pool. Singing tra la 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 la. Singing tra la 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 la. Singing tra la 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 la. Singing tra la 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 la. Tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la. All the bulldogs stooped to catch him. And the snapper called his paw. All the bulldogs stooped to catch him. And the snapper called his paw. All the bulldogs stooped to catch him. And the snapper called his paw. The polywog died a laughing to see him wag his jaw. Singing tra-la-la-la-la-la. Singing tra-la-la-la-la-la. Singing tra-la-la-la-la-la. Singing tra-la-la-la-la-la. Tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la. Yeah, hold on, yeah. Wait a minute there, Mr. Jack. Well, what's the matter? What's going on out here? Would you sing a little song, that's all? Yeah, well, do you know molasses and meat chirp a little warbler this year thing? Well, yes, sir, us, us is, uh, wants to sing because we got 10,000 fan mail letters, people asking us to sing more. Wait a minute. 10,000 fan mail letters? Well, that's wonderful. Let me see them. Here's the postcard right here. Oh, come on. Let's see. Says the monkey to the owl. Oh, what'll you have to drink? Says the monkey to the owl. Oh, what'll you have to drink? Says the monkey to the owl. Oh, what'll you have to drink? Well, since you are so very kind, I'll take a bottle of ink. Oh, he'll I'll take, take a, a bottle, bottle of ink. ink. Yeah, wait a minute. Take... Wait a minute, Apus. What's the matter? What you mean, drinking ink? Huh? You working for Dr. Pepper. If you drink anything, you gotta drink Dr. Pepper. Six bottles for a two-bit piece. Yeah, but I couldn't get that two bits to rhyme with the drink. Keep quiet. Go ahead, Miss Peggy Pepper. Don't pay no mind to him. Pharaoh's daughter on the bank. Little Moses in the pool. Pharaoh's daughter on the bank. Little Moses in the pool. Pharaoh's daughter on the bank. Little Moses in the pool. She fished him up with a telegraph pole and sent him off to school. Singing tra la 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 Singing tra la 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 Singing tra la 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 Tra la la tra la la tra la 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 Singing tra la 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 Singing tra la 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 Tra la 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 tra la 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 tra la 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 Tra la 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 Say boys, here's another postcard just came collect. Yeah. Hey, Malazzi. Look what's funny, boy. What? Did, didn't I see you at the eat em and beat em restaurant this evening with your gal, Ducky Pew? Yeah, and boy, can that gal eat up some teeth. Oh, she absorbs nutrition, huh? Yeah, everything she eats seems to leave the table. Yeah. <laughs> boy, I say to her, I say, Ducky Pew, you eating too doggone much. I say, if you eat anything more, you're going to bust. You say if she eats any more, she gonna bust? Yeah. What'd she say? Pass that cake and get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you mean she can't eat? Huh? Oh, man, she can devour food. Yeah? You know, the first time I ever... That's the first time that I ever saw sparks come out of a knife and fork. <laughs> well, I'll say one thing. I can't say much for your table manners. How come? Imagine you reaching clear across that table there for a piece of bread when it was right next to Ducky Pew. What's wrong with that? What's wrong? 
Where's your tongue? You have one, hasn't you? Yeah, but my arm is the longest. Oh. <laughs> Good gentlemen, dear. Have you opened your ruby lips yet and asked Ducky Pugh's papa for his permission so you could marry that gal? Boy, I hauled off with my bare face hanging out and this big mouth of mine got me into trouble. You know, how's that? Well, last night I said to him, I said, Mr. Pugh. Yeah. I said, can I marry your daughter, Ducky? Mm hmm. Then he said, first shut your mouth so I can see who you is. <laughs> Well, you know one thing, Melissa, I will say. Huh? You know, that certainly was a beautiful lavalier that Ducky Pugh was wearing. Crazy fool, that wasn't no lavalier, that was her lip. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind, enough of this chin chat. You know, I think you have another little letter in your hand now. Yeah. Now, don't you tell me this from the folks down in Chitlin Switch. Boy, and it's plum full of news, too. It is, huh? Yeah, the letter says right here at the beginning of the commencement of the Roten. Said that my brother Adenois, his cow, had a bad case of St. Vitus Dane. Your brother's cow had the St. Vitus Dane? Yeah. What's he doing about it? Oh, he just let her have it. She whoops her own cream that way. <laughs> <laughs> How unreconstructed. Yeah, then I got a very good news here about my third cousin, Gibraltar. Oh, you mean the fellow who's always out of work? Yeah, he was, but he got a brand new good job now as a draftsman in a builder's office. Yeah? Well, tell me. Is he the head draftsman? No, he's just one of the underdrawers. I see. Well, molasses in January are coming back in spite of anything we can do. So if you'll just prance up here front and center, Peggy Pepper. Here I am, Jack. What's your song to be, Peggy? Just a little bit south of North Carolina. Head south, Peter. <laughs> south of North Carolina, that's where I long to be. In the little brown shack in South Carolina, someone waits for me. In each letter he says, the weather's fine, the folks are feeling great. And the garden looks grand, the red rose vine is clinging to the gate. Just a little bit south of North Carolina, that's where my thoughts all stray. To the one I love best in South Carolina, I'm going back someday. I can hardly wait to see the face of the one I idolize. Just a little bit south of North Carolina, I'll find paradise. Can't figure out why we ever wanted to roam. Can't figure out why I went away from home. Gee, how we miss all the friends we used to know. We used to know. Can't wait till I return to the place that I love so. Just a little bit south of North Carolina, that's where we long to be. In the little brown shack in South Carolina, someone waits for me. In his letter he says, the weather's fine and the folks are feeling great. Oh, the garden looks grand, the red rose vine is clinging to the do, gate. Do, 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 just a little bit south of North Carolina, that's where our thoughts all stray. To the one I love best in South Carolina, I'm going back someday. We can hardly wait to see the face of the one we idolize. Just a little bit south of North Carolina, we all find paradise. Friends, and you sport fans especially, can you identify all these famous American calls used in sports? First, straight. Second, four. Third. They're off. <laughs> yes, those are easy. Baseball, golf, and horse racing. And you know, folks, there's another mighty cheerful call you'll hear nowadays wherever the young sports crowd gathers. And the way it goes is... Come on, everybody. It's time for a cold bottle of Dr. Pepper. Absolutely right, pretty Peggy Pepper. This year, more than ever before, all America is voting Dr. Pepper the new favorite drink to enjoy with out-of-door sports. 
for a cold bottle of Dr. Pepper every day at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock is a great way to help swing energy up. You enjoy life more. Friends, if you haven't yet tried Dr. Pepper, drink a cold bottle tomorrow, sure. Then, when you find out how good it tastes, take a six-bottle carton home to the family. Six full bottles for only 25 cents. You'll like Dr. Pepper. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to the town jail or workhouse where January is warden. The scene is the warden's office. January is seated behind a desk. <laughs> Run him on, Peter. I entered the building. Hey, clerk, I want to rest to here at this hotel. At this hotel? Yes, I see the sign outside say workhouse. I stopped at the Rich House Hotel, the Waldorf House. I figured this workhouse was a good hotel. <laughs> we'll curl my whiskers and call me a catfish. <laughs> he thinks the jail here is a hotel. I swear, boy, you was the dumbest man I ever saw. Is that so? Yeah. Well, when I was only 14 years old, I could recitate the Gettysburg address. Well, now, what's so bright about recitating Gettysburg address at the age of 14? Well, could Lincoln do it? Oh, <laughs> Now, look here, old man. This yeah. ain't no place for you. No, sir. Uh, wh why don't you stop at the other hotel down the other end of town down there? Oh, the rooms down there are so doggone terribly small. Oh, really? Certainly. Every time I shut the door, the knob gets in bed with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, e even the mice walk hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> the doggone right. And every time I swallow, my Adam's apple opens and shuts the window. <laughs> Besides, I can't stay here. You can't stay there? Why not? You see, some defective, he raided the crap game at the hotel, and I was the only person to get away with the money. Yeah? Now I want to hide in this here workhouse till the police forgets all about me. <laughs> ain't that smart? <laughs> yeah, how quaint. But ain't you afraid the G-men will get you? Oh, my Uncle Pete, he's a G-man. Government? Garbage. <laughs> So they ready the dice game, huh? Uh-huh. Well, you know, on second thought, I think I'm going to let you stay around here for a little while. Well, that's good. Now, before I register, I hope your guests ain't snooty. Snooty? They don't go in for long words, do they? No. No, just for long sentences. Oh. Well, anyhow, I like this place. Of course, I want to get exercise here. I like to play that game that my old uncle likes to play on the grass. <laughs> the game your uncle plays on the grass? Yeah. Croquette? No, he's still alive. Oh. It's a game where he uses a mallet and a ball and hits it through a little hook. Yeah, well, that's all right, but we don't use mallets and a ball. No. No. We use a hammer and a rock. Oh. We call the game Rock Pile. Oh, my goodness, Rock Pile. How unconcerned. Now, now, will you please show me to my room? Yeah, well, right this way, please. Who, who, who's that fellow what just went by? The man with the sound effect? <laughs> you mean the man with the ball and chain? Yeah. Oh, that's just a hobby of his. Can I have one, too, please? It clanks pretty. <laughs> well, you can have one if you're good. Now, here. Here's your room right here. Hey, clerk, there ain't no comfortable chair in this room. Oh, wait a minute. There's one in that room across the way over there. Can I have that chair, please, sir? What chair? The one with all them little wires hooked on it. My gosh. <laughs> this man wants to borrow the electric chair. How shocking. Uh, Say, listen here. Huh? You two, <laughs> you too stupid to keep around here. Boy, you corrupt this place. Now you get out of here before I hit you on top of the head with this blackjack. Now get out of here. You hear me? Get out. Well, here I is on the outside looking in. So he throwed me out. I'm going to get even by throwing a brick through the window of this workhouse. Uh-oh. Here comes another one of them bellboys dressed like the fella inside with a great big old club in his hand. Hey. Hey, there you. Uh, you throw that brick through that window? Well, I should smother to reflect I did. I'm so at the fella inside for not letting me stay. Now, you come along with me. Huh? You'll stay inside there for a long time. <laughs> Is you sure you ain't gonna let nobody take me out of here? Not even the police? Not even the police. Well, all I got to say is if the police can't take me out of there, they're certainly going to be sore. Yeah? Why? Why? 
They want to put me in jail. We are likely to hear more of molasses in January before many minutes go by. Now, Peter Van Steeden and his boys will... Say, Peter, what's that baseball bat for? Sure, it isn't a ball bat, it's a shillelagh, it is. <laughs> Came from the same place that accent did, eh? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to get in the mood, Jack. <laughs> All right, Peter Van Steeden and his old Scalara hat will give us a shillelagh downbeat. <laughs> now do my best to follow along. Peter, sure, and I will. The road to Tralee and a beautiful Irish song it is. <laughs> The pale moon was rising above the green mountain. The sun was declining beneath the blue sea. I strayed with my love to the pure crystal fountain that stands in the beautiful vale of Tralee. She was lovely and fair. Was the rose of the summer, yet was not her beauty alone that won me. I know twas the truth in her eyes, ever dawning, that made me love Mary, the rose of the leaves. The cool shades of evening, their mantle were spreading. And Mary, all smiling and listening to me. The moon through the valley her pale ray was shedding. When I won the heart of the rose of Philly. So lovely and fair as the rose of the summer. Yet was not her beauty alone that won me. And what was the truth in her eye ever dawning that made me love a Mary? Lovely Mary. Peggy, the other day I stopped my car at a store and bought myself a cold bottle of Dr. Pepper. And, say, guess whose picture I saw on the wall when I went in? Mine, I'll bet, Jack. Because wherever Dr. Pepper's sold, you'll find me close at hand, reminding you that energy picks up, you enjoy life more when you drink Dr. Pepper at ten, two, and four. You bet, and you'll see Peggy all dressed up in a cute costume. Because to step out in front of the head of the parade, you need lots of vim and vigor. We've got a song about that, Jack. Remember? Here's how it goes. If you would like to lead the band At work or school or play By Dr. Pepper, try that drink You'll holler hip hooray Get six full bottles for two-bit piece It's the best drink in the land You know that Dr. Pepper flavor Certainly tastes grand Ring the chime, ring the chime It's Dr. Pepper time Your energy picks up You'll enjoy life more At, at ten, ten, and two, two and four, four. As we told you last week, molasses in January are now in the army, at least for part of our show. At the moment, we find molasses in the camp kitchen, where he has been assigned to KP duty as assistant to the cook. As the scene opens, Sergeant January enters the kitchen. Here, yeah, yeah. here. What's the matter with you, Private Molasses? Huh? You look sort of all as if you is in trouble. Oh, Sergeant, I feel so auxiliary tonight. You do? Yeah. I decided to make some bread for the first time, so I put a barrel of yeast in the dough. A barrel of yeast? Yeah, sir. Yeah. I see. And right now you're having trouble keeping the bread in the oven. In the oven? <laughs> I can't even keep it in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Now leave that bread alone. Oh, I'm through with it. I noticed one thing, that since you've been helping to cook here in the kitchen, the food has been all the same. No variety. Yeah, well, you ain't got that to worry about no more, Sergeant. 
You know, Roy, we're going to have a good hundred things for lunch today. A hundred things for lunch? Yeah. Boy, that's good. What is that? Beans. Be- beans. <laughs> then we're going to have some bloodshot celery. What's that? Rhubarb. Oh, quit that. <laughs> Then I'm working on something to give the boys variety in their meals. Yeah, what's that? Gonna give them some meat for a change. Some meat. <laughs> you know, I put some meat on the table day four yesterday. You did? One little old curious boy run out there and started counting the meals. <laughs> oh, stop that. I just happened to thought of a good stiff ticket for angel cake. Oh, is that so? Say, how do you make your angel cake? Well, you mix together a barrel of dough, two barrels of gunpowder, yeah. three barrels of dynamite, uh-huh. and a quarter of nitroglycerin. <laughs> what? Then you put them in the oven, grab your harp, and rise with the cake. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy ape of you. What's the matter? You, you know, what are you complaining about? Didn't us give you something special to, for yourself last night? Oh, you mean the mushroom? Certainly. Nobody else at the table got none of them, did they? No. But them was special for you. How did you like them? Oh, fine. How you feel this morning? Oh, I feel grand. Hey, cook. What? You can serve them to the rest of the boys. They ain't toadstools. Well, <laughs> <laughs> listen here, Private Manassas. You know I have another complaint to make about the milk that you've been serving around here. Yeah, sir. Do you know that the milk this morning for breakfast was blue? Well, doggone it, can I help it if the cow was disappointed in love? <laughs> well, boy, you should have her psychoanalyzed. I am. I'm going to put some in her oats tonight. Oh. <laughs> I think I'll mix a little gravy in there with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't come in here to bandy words without. No, and I didn't want to bandy with you. Excuse me for reading your well, line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Captain Van Steeden, he wants me to take you out of the kitchen right now. Oh, goody, goody. I hate working here. Yeah. Goodbye, kitchen. Yeah, and he wants you to work over on the mule. Hello, kitchen. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Boy, you got to do it. How come I'm got to do As it? As a soldier, you got to take orders. That's how come. Yeah, sir. But then you're not much of a soldier anyway. Oh, neither am I. But I, I remember when I was in the Army years ago, and I never will forget it as long as I can remember. Yeah. There I was out on the battlefield. Yeah. My ruby lips were the flipping and the flopping. Yeah, I see. And I always used to fight laying right down on my stomach. <laughs> Why did you fight laying on your stomach? So I wouldn't interfere with the bullets. <laughs> well, I didn't want to get none of them Never mind that. Now, come on over here to the stable. Huh? Oh, over to the stable. Yeah. Home sweet home, huh? <laughs> and listen. Well, listen. Is... I'll be there in a minute, honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is your baby, boo. <laughs> I'd say one thing. Now, look, Melanzas. <laughs> you, you got to be careful handling these mules. Huh? You know, you got to be careful with these mules. Sound one... like my wife was calling me back there. Yeah, yeah. that's all. Right. <laughs> but you know, one fella, he used to be a chauffeur. And one time, he got under one of these mules to see why he didn't go. <laughs> he got underneath the mule to see yeah. why he didn't go? What happened? <laughs> His widow still laughs about it. <laughs> Hello, kitchen. You come back here. <laughs> Boy, how protoplasmic. I'm going to try that on the cow, too. Never mind. <laughs> now, here, come here. Huh? Here's a curry comb. Now, you go over there and curry that mule with it. Yeah. Take this big old E-flat mule right here, the big one. Okay, get over a little bit there. Now, just sort of stroke him along the side there with the comb. Whoa, stuff. See? Ain't yeah. nothing to be afraid of, is there? No. Now, now, stroke him back there a little bit in the flank like. Right like that. Scoot over a little bit. See? Ain't nothing to be afraid of, is there? No. Now, then, uh, sort of stroke him up and down in the back back there. Move over there, mule. See? Ain't nothing to be afraid of, is there? Hello, kitchen. <laughs> hey, never mind. You get up from there and come on back here. Now get to work on that mule. Yeah, sir. Boy, you know, I think there's something wrong with that mule's hind foot. Huh? Go ahead, Dad. Lift up the mule's foot. Okay. Hey, mule. Lift up your crazy big fan foot. Lift up your foot, brother. Go on, mule. Lift up your foot, brother. <laughs> Look what I'm calling brother. <laughs> How orthopedic. <laughs> I should repress to inflation. 
Uh, lift your foot, mule. Lift your foot, mule. I said, lift your foot, mule. Hello, kitchen. <laughs> Friends, just as you enjoy the songs and smiles of our big Dr. Pepper parade every week at this time, so you'll enjoy the zestful flavor of a cold bottle of Dr. Pepper. Millions of folks who have tried them all are discovering that wonderful Dr. Pepper flavor is in a class by itself, at the head of the parade. You'll enjoy drinking a Dr. Pepper at work, at play, and in your leisure hours at home. So get a six-bottle carton tomorrow, sure. It costs only... 25 cents. And to all the girls, I'd like to say, a good recipe for summertime popularity is to keep a smile on your face always and have lots of energy. Dr. Pepper is a drink that makes you feel like smiling. It's exciting, it's inviting, it's delighting. Oh, uh, Peggy. Yes, Jack? You know what they say in Piccadilly when the going gets rough? Why, thumbs up, Jack. Thumbs up. And that's what they say in America, too. Thumbs up, Peter. Thumbs up. Don't you let that spirit in. Thumbs up. Stiffen up that upper lip. If there's a job to do, we're gonna do it right. When the job is done, we know each American son of a gun will have his thumbs up just to show that we're okay. Thumbs that's the Yankee Doodle way. How can we go wrong when we're a hundred million strong to holla thumbs up? We can take a thumbs up. We can make a thumbs up today. When there's work to do, it's true that we have always done our share. So once more from shore to shore, today we stand together saying a thumbs up. For a flag that's flying high, thumbs up for that spirit do or die. We've got a heritage of which we're mighty proud. Remember Valley Forge, a real American guy named George. He kept his thumbs up in that good American way. Thumbs up, so today we proudly say. Dynamo and Powie Spark and Wheel are turning now to show a thumbs up. We can take a thumbs up, we can make a thumbs up. What? Come here, you leather-headed rascal. What's the matter? You scared of a little old e-fat flat mule like that. Been running around yet telling me what a braved-up man. Say he was the bravest man in the war. Certainly I was. My whole family's all braved up. Oh, my, yeah? My papa, though, he was the bravest man in the war. What you talking about? The bravest man in the war was some of the big generals. Boy, you talk like a streamlined fool. What do you mean? Boy, the bravest man in the war was my papa, and I can prove it. Yeah, well, go ahead and prove it. One of them big generals you say was so brave, got the tip end of his finger shot off, and he was running behind, behind the trenches there crying like a little baby. Well? Well, there laid my poor old papa over in the ditch with his whole head shot off, and he didn't say a word. Oh, get out. Next week, molasses in January will be in the army again. So don't forget to tune your dial this way again for Molasses in January, Peter Van Steeden and his orchestra, the Pepper Uppers, yours truly, Jack Arthur, and of course, pretty Peggy Pepper, who'll sing. Bringing joy across the land, Dr. Pepper. If you want to lead the band, drink it every day. Energy picks up and you'll enjoy life more. Remember Dr. Pepper time, ten and two and four. Good night, all. And don't think it hasn't been charming. <laughs>